I've been to some really excellent talks at the SciTEFL, and a lot of the ones I've been to have been about new technology and the new frontiers, the new horizons that we're, we're heading into, the, the virtual worlds and the, the Twitter spheres and, and things like that. Um, this is very definitely not a talk about the new technology. This is uh, taking you back in time. Um, you'll have to decide whether it's taking you back in time for any, any useful purpose. Obviously, I'm offering this because I think there is something here that I'm worried may be being forgotten. And it's been forgotten in a very, very short space of time. And that, that, that interests me and surprises me. Uh, so I'd just like to either remind you of, of this or uh, show it to you for the first time. I'm, I'm puzzled that this term, situational presentation, and in fact the, the, the concept behind it, seems to be relatively unknown now. There's a whole generation of teachers that don't know what this is and, and don't know how to do it. Or maybe they know it, but they know it by a different name or they know it with, with some other differences. So I'm going to show you something today, something that's old-fashioned, definitely out of the current ways of thinking, um, very widely discredited. I, I, I hope this is the only session you go to at IETEFL where somebody is actually demonstrating a discredited technique to you. Um, um, so, I'm going to talk about situational presentations. I'm following Scott Thornbury, the remarkable Mr. Thornbury. Um, where better to start than by getting a definition of what a situational presentation is? So, I, I went to his uh, excellent A to Z of ELT to look up situational presentations. Um, here's Scott's definition of uh, situational uh, silent way sim singular. Oh! <laughs> excellent book. But how interesting that in a, 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 a dictionary of language teaching published in the last few years, the situational presentation doesn't even rate a mention. I find that fascinating, seeing as this is something that if you trained, well, around the time I trained, shall we say, it, it, it would have been the most significant thing on your training course. And yet in the space of that generation, it, it's been forgotten about to the point of not even being included in... A, a very important listing of, of ELT. It's, it's gone. So maybe I'm going to give you a definition so you know what I'm on about. I, uh, this is a very, a very brief summary of what I think it is. I say I'll give you a demo in a, in a few minutes. It's basically a classroom technique for presenting new language to learners. It could be for practicing new language, but it tended to be for offering, for inputting, for presenting language, an assumption that it was new for learners. Commonly used as a, as a step in the PPP cycle, pr present, practice, produce. Uh, and the, the typical way that this technique was done, it would involve a teacher uh, creating a context, creating a situation. Uh, the situation was very often done by uh, means of a board drawing, but it didn't have to be. It could have been done with flashcards or a mime situation in the classroom, but creating some sort of context that reflected real life in some way, even if in a cartoonish kind of way, um, and a context within which the language might be used. So the language will be used within that situation that the teacher sets up. And once the context has been created, the teacher then focuses learners onto the meaning of the language. Um, so that, that's a sort of introduction. I think I'll, I'll just do a little demonstration uh, of, of what a situational presentation looks like. I apologise if, if this is familiar to, to you. It's a little bit odd, actually, because, <laughs> I mean, a situational presentation isn't typically something you do to a room of uh, 100 people in a lecture theatre. Um, and I don't have a, a whiteboard that I can sort of draw pictures as I go. So I've had to prepare the pictures in advance, which takes away some of that necessary element of, of instant flexibility that you need to make it come alive. So I, I apologise if, if this is a slightly odd demonstration. Okay, so you're my class, my scattered English-speaking class. Uh, you're my students. And, and here's, so for the next, sorry, for the next five, seven minutes, you're, 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 you're students in a, in a demo lesson. See this handsome man? What should we call him? What's his oh. name? Tom. Somebody said Tom. Let's call him Tom. And... What about her? What's her name? Julie. Tom, Tom and Julie. Okay. 
Where do you think Tom and Julie are? Any ideas? In the kitchen. In the kitchen? No, they're not in the kitchen. Nice idea. But in the town? Yes, they are in the town. But, but where exactly? Where do, you, where do you think they are? A furniture shop. <laughs> no, not a furniture shop. Market. What's a market? Don't ask that. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll assume we, we do these little bits about what's a market, etc. Yes, they're, they're, they're in a market. What has Tom seen? What did he see? What's that? An octopus. An octopus. Okay. I could teach the word if, if you don't know it. If you don't know. What do you think Tom is saying? Look. <laughs> Look, this is what he's saying. What do you think he's saying? <laughs> It's, it's three words. Look, look, look again. What's he saying? What's the first word? Look. Oh. oh. Listen. Oh. Look. Octopus. That's what he's saying. Okay. Listen again. Oh. Look. Octopus. Okay. Everybody? Oh. No, 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 no. No. You've got, a, you've got the point as well. Okay. 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 Are you ready? Tell the person next to you. Okay. Okay. I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> okay, he's now asking a question to Julie. What question do you think he's asking? Is octopus a fruit? No, that's not the question. <laughs> Have you ever been to Paris? Can you see how I could go on with that lesson? Or what I'm doing is I'm showing picture cues that give the students an idea of a, a sentence that they can, they can say for themselves. I can model it myself if they can't say it. I get the students to repeat it. I get them to repeat it on their own, as a group, to each other, etc., etc. And the, the, the situation is relatively simple, but from that I can actually get a number of sentences. Just a very quick review, what were the steps involved in that? Well, first of all, I established the context, the situation of the marketplace, and then I tried to build the, the dialogue. There was a little bit of dialogue there that was non-essential to the language point I was teaching. Obviously, my aim was, have you ever questions? But the oh, look, octopus preceded that, and is not the grammar point, but was just enough to maybe make it that little bit more interesting, that little bit funnier, that little bit more, more memorable. And finally, I want a situation where the target language is, is actually used, and I want to get the target language from the students, if possible. And I want to get them to practice it. And that may involve chorally, individually, open pairs, closed pairs, etc.